What does this tell us? What it tells us is so important vis-a-vis -vis neuroplasticity, vis-a-vis -vis best learning strategies. This is something that, goodness, I wish I had learned when I was in graduate school, when I was an undergraduate, when I was in high school and elementary school. Goodness, even when I was in kindergarten, I wish I'd learned this. If one looks at the majority of data in this whole field of testing as a studying tool, how much improvement do you think you get from testing yourself once on new material? The answer is about 50%, five, zero. And I can say that on the basis of the fact that in studies of musical learning, of mathematical learning, of language learning, of motor learning, when subjects are exposed to new material and then tested at some period of time later, the percentage of information they get right or that they are able to perform something correctly diminishes over time, especially because they're not doing any practice and no testing in the intervening time. This was built into these experiments. And then you simply ask how much of the material was forgotten if they just were exposed to the material. So when you self-test material, you have the amount of forgetting that occurs compared to if you're just exposed to the material. I want you to keep that fact in mind because that fact is the one that really hit me upside the head and made me realize, goodness gracious, how I wish that I'd self-tested myself on material that I wanted to remember over time rather than reading it over and over. If I had just known that testing myself on material while walking out of class or soon after getting home or later that evening or the next day would allow me to perform so much better on an exam, a midterm or a final exam, if I had known that testing oneself or being tested soon after exposure to material would have the amount of forgetting even out to a year later, I definitely would have saved myself a lot of time.